Hey guys, this is Sage Valentine and this is my review of CBS's Under the Dome Season 2, Episode number 3, entitled Force Majeure, which refers to an act of God. And there's definitely an act of God going on in this episode in the form of fiery, bloody, crimson red rain falling from the sky or from the base of the dome. I'm really not sure anymore. As far as this season, what is going on at Chester's Mill, but it seems like it's gotten worse since last season. I thought last season was pretty crazy, but this one definitely takes the cake. So we're introduced to a barber named Lyle, and Lyle seems like a very sinister person, or maybe it's just me and, and being acquainted with Dwight Yoakam and his brand of crazy, but... um. Lyle, in the beginning of the episode, is like waiting for something to happen, and he's waiting kind of with a smile. Big Jim really doesn't notice what's going on because he's like has all these little cartoon hearts around his head about Rebecca Pine. Then we get to Joe McAllister, who's like so worried that the dome is going to come for him and come for James and come for Nori because they are the only three left from the four hands. Even as Julia Shumway assures him, like, I, I don't think that this is the Dome doing this. He's wondering, well, why did the Dome let Angie die and the Dome's not here for protection? This whole thing. So, Big Jim lets Rebecca Pine talk him into this mandatory thing of signing um, these citizen registration papers which makes me extremely suspect of Rebecca Pine and I'm wondering like what is her motive exactly and is the town really running low on supplies or is this just her way to invoke chaos in this town either way there's something not right about Rebecca Pine anyway um everybody's gathered there um Julia Shumway brings Melanie Cross who at this point, really doesn't like Barbie that much and thinks that there's something familiar about him. Meanwhile, Barbie's very iffy about her. It's a love-hate situation between those two. And Julia's, like, trying to get him to like her. But Julia's noticing that change I was talking about in Barbie, where Barbie's becoming very sinister. And I'm not sure why. So, Junior learns that his mother... As per his uncle Sam Fudro, his mother suffered from the same blackouts that he is starting to suffer from. He only had one with Angie. I'm sure there are going to be more this entire season. But anyway, um, he said Sam basically said that in order for his mother to remember exactly what happened or remember bits and pieces, she would have to return to the crime scene or return to the scene of the blackout. And the doctors referred to her blackouts as a fugue state. Okay. So, Lyle thinks that this whole situation is a part of, or basically the second or third of ten plagues that's basically going to signal, I guess, the end. He's one of those crazy religious biblical nuts. And, um... One of those really crazy ones that Stephen King adores adding into all of his work. <laughs> the Rev last season was his own brand of crazy. But anyway, um, Rebecca doesn't believe this. She's more scientific. It reminds me of the whole evolution thing going on in the world, and it's pretty funny. And he was like, so you think you're going to solve everything? And she's like, okay, well, everybody, as it starts raining, she gathers people to go and collect... Um, the rain from outside until they notice that the rain water is blood. Meanwhile, Joe and Nori and Melanie, who Nori's kind of pissed off Melanie's even following them, they go to the school and Joe is trying to look up something regarding a scientific project. It's either about windmills or wind turbines or something to that effect. So to make a long story short, um, Joe starts noticing that, like, he checks, some reason he checks his emails, and he sees all these emails on his tablet. Meanwhile, Rebecca Pine and Big Jim are riding over to the school when Big Jim sees some type of figure in the middle of the street 
dressed in this black raincoat. It's really creepy. It reminds me of the dude from um, I Know What You Did Last Summer. All he needs is the hook. I mean, it is supposed to be Maine, so <laughs> everything with Stephen King pretty much takes place in Maine. So anyway, what ends up happening is that he swerves to miss him, hits a tree. The dude comes up to the car, snatches him, tosses him out, takes the car with Rebecca Pine, and they go off. We learned that Joe got an email from his parents, and they, I guess, are telling him that he needs to take care of his sister. We know that Angie's dead, so he can't take care of Miss Angie. Melanie seems to be getting very close to Joe during this um, episode, and Nori is pissed. Nori does not like it. Um, Nori convinces James, because James pops up at the school to go back to the crime scene to, you know, try to figure out what happened and what was his role in this and was he here during his blackout to make a uh, to shorten this nori convinces him to look at uh some type of tablet and he sees a link and he sees some type of email that says from someone named hounds of diana and says i can help you jane so barbie contacts jim they get jim and he's barely breathing his skin is covered in the um, red stuff that looks like blood running down his face and it's burned him so he's he's a little bit in and out. Meanwhile, Rebecca Pine is tied to a chair in the middle of what looks like some type of garage or something. She sees Lyle who took her and he says that, listen, if Big Jim is righteous, the rain will save him. As I said, a religious nut. Big Jim is self-righteous. He's always been as long as I've known him. And Rebecca's like, listen... Lyle, help me stop this rain. And Lyle's like, the dome doesn't want to stop. There's a new god in Chester's Mill, a.k.a. the dome. You have a choice to make, and I pray you make the right choice. So, like I said, Big Jim is still unconscious. Lyle believes that this is the end of days. Rebecca is interfering with this plan, according to him, and it's he's going to baptize her with that bloody water. Anyway... James sees this video of his mom. She's alive. She says, if you need any answers, talk to Lyle Shumley. Only to Lyle is crazy religious nut barber. So while on his way to find Lyle, Junior stumbles upon the barber shop. He rendezvous with Barbie and Julia Shumway. And he deduces that there's probably some sort of crack in the dome that's letting this bloody water or whatever in. No, in fact, that crack thing comes from um joe joe McAllister. he mentions that and nori's like well they threw all these nuclear bombs at the dome and it wouldn't move so there's no way that happening and we also notice that nori's becoming even more jealous of miss melanie and her feelings and relationship that's slowly growing with joe McAllister, which is pretty funny because <laughs> it's pretty funny because she calls him sweetheart right in front of Nori, so I'm not sure what little sinister thing that little lady's doing. But anyway, Lyle's like baptizing Rebecca. And he believes that she's standing in the way of the Dome's plan, and he hopes that she... He says that you are a lost cause or something to that effect. Here comes Barbie, Junior, and Julia. They're in a standoff with Lyle. He tells them to put their guns down. Julia's trying to talk Lyle down, and to make a long story short, Rebecca picks up the basin with the bloody war, throws it on Lyle, and Julia's pissed because Julia's like, I was trying to talk him down. Why did you do that? And Rebecca's just looking at her, and I'm looking at <laughs> Julia like, um, this dude was basically trying to kill her. I don't blame her, even though she's a little iffy. I don't blame her. I probably would have done the same thing, probably poured it over his head. Anyway, so in the end, Rebecca comes up with this idea to save, to spray the water. She saves the day. We learn a couple things at the end of this episode that are going to be extremely important to the rest of the season. So here we go. Sam, Lyle, and Patricia were involved in something, and Sam wants that to stay buried. Melanie Cross was alive in 1988. So there's some mystery behind that, and her name is Melanie Cross. I've been calling her Melanie Cross because of IMDb. Number two, Melanie knew that 
locker combination off the top of her head. No, not even sure how she knew that. And number three, Big Jim has a big decision to make because Rebecca Klein, Rebecca Pine basically told him, listen, if you want us to continue to survive, you're going to have to cut down the survivors in Chester's Mill. That's a hell of a decision to make for Big Jim. And the fact that he's the new Big Jim, the new kinder, gentler Big Jim, is even worse. And Barbie's going along with this, and it completely upsets Julia Shumway. Julia's just like walking away. She reminds me of Mary from Precious. Just, not Mary. Mariah Carey's um, character from Precious just walking away like, don't even touch me, don't come near me. So they have to figure out who's a burden and who's an asset. So thank you guys for tuning in to my overview slash review sort of thing. Anyway, guys, don't forget to rate this video. Leave your comments, your predictions, or anything else about this episode. Subscribe to my brand of crazy, and definitely check me out on Google Plus and Twitter, Sage Valentine. So until next time, guys, stay tuned for my other reviews. Love you all. Take care. Stay dry. Peace out. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>